بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله بيافت وفيق to continue our study of international relations in Islam based on the book by Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli with the same title uh, we said that in the second chapter we discuss how to organize international relations based on two principles Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli believes that there are two major principles that organize these relations in Islam one is principle of justice one is principle of unity al-adl and wahda uh, we started discussion about adl about justice what is the definition of justice its significance and we want to continue now uh, he says adl or justice is inclusive all human beings, all cultures, all traditions ask for justice. They want justice, love justice. Even, uh, for example, if you imagine thieves, if they want to distribute among themselves something that they have stolen from people, they like someone to distribute who is just, not someone who is unjust. So everyone loves justice. Maybe in practice, of course, sometimes when they are distributing, some people compromise, but they love justice and they love to be treated with justice. Then he says, from Ayah 7 of Surat in Fitar, we can understand that justice is somehow built in us. Allah says, خَلَّقَكَ فَسَوَّاكَ فَعَدَلَكَ Allah created you and then سَوَّاكَ balanced you, made everything proportionate. فَعَدَلَكَ and then made you Mu'tadil, which again you can say uh, moderate, balanced, measured, uh, not inordinate. So there is a dimension of justice which is in creation. As we said also before in the hadith, bil adl samawatu wal ard. Then he says, also, when Pharaoh asked, وَمَنْ رَبُّكُمَا يَا مُوسَى Who is your Lord, O Moses? Moses said, رَبُّنَا الَّذِي أَعْطَى كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلْقَهُ ثُمَّ حَدَى Our Lord is the one who gave everything it to creation and then guided. So this general guidance, this al hidayatul amma which is for everything, is connected very closely to that adalak, to that measure and balance which is in every creature. So this is the way Allah has created them and the way Allah directs them towards their perfection in their own of course level in their own uh, degree and level by fitra no one would 
act against justice by if they act and operate according to their fitrah if they go out of requirements and limits of justice this would be a kind of intervention it's very important injustice is intervention natural course of affairs is justice uh, he brings this beautiful also ayah and makes a beautiful point in surah hud verse 56 allah says ma min dabatan illa huwa akhidhun bi nasiyatiha inna rabbi ala siratin mustaqim there is no dabba which means something which moves dabba yadubbu means to move so there is nothing that moves can be a human being can be an animal can be an insect a bird anything that moves unless Allah is taking its nausea nausea is the uh, hair in the forehead or in front of head so I have to um, check uh, I just doubted but so far my understanding was in the hair of the forehead or maybe in front of it I have to check Allah is taking that what does it mean it means that Allah has full control over them they cannot rebel when Allah through taqwin wants to do something it happens yes through tashri he recommends he prescribes he commands he prohibits through tashri and he allows us to either obey or disobey of course we have to be responsible for our choice but for taqween 100 percent everything that he wants happens and every being acts according to his command oh, he is controlling them Inna Rabbi ala sirat al-mustaqim. Truly, my Lord is on the straight path. So, if my Lord is on the straight path and has control of everything, it means that by fitra, by the way they are created, by taqween, everything is facing sirat al-mustaqim. Everything is leaning towards justice. But when it comes to human beings or gens who have also free will, then we have something extra. That now with those things that we have choice about them, we need to observe justice. Animals, everything they do is the best that they can do uh, plants etc but for us this is something that we have to mm, mm, struggle and uh, strive therefore Allah says uh, we have to observe justice in Surah Nisa verse 135 Allah says shaytanur rajim ya ayyuhalladheena amanu كونوا قوامين بالغسط شهداء لله. All those who believe be قوامين بالغسط شهداء لله. I will explain قوام. We need to expand it. شهداء لله means witnesses for the sake of God. So you offer your testimony for the sake of Allah. So whatever we present, whatever we support, should be also just. And Qawwam Bilqis. Qawwam is from Qama Yaqumu, Qiyaman, Qaim. They are all from the same roots. As you remember, and inshallah we will talk about it, we have this concept of Qiyam Bilqis. You have to rise with Justice, social justice means to establish social justice. لقد أرسلنا رسولنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط. Allah says, 
we sent all the messengers with clear signs and we sent with them the book and the scale why so that people do qiyam bilqis means they stand up for justice or they establish justice this is the meaning of qiyam bilqis but here Allah says not only to be qa'imina bilqis to be qawamina bilqis because if you want to establish social justice it's not easy if you want to stand up and rise for justice social justice it needs efforts it needs uh, some struggle it needs some continuity some persistence so we use siqiyya mubaligh qawwam qawwamin bil qist we shouldn't uh, allow doubts which are unnecessary it doesn't mean to be stubborn because some people think that oh we have to be for example you know repeating ourselves everywhere every time uh, because then it means that we are compromising no we are not stubborn we are not uh, let me tell you something look at the difference between a true mu'min a wise mu'min and a mu'min who is not or someone who is not mu'min or anyway is not wise maybe the one who is not wise repeats everything everywhere but mu'min for every case has assessment and then after assessment he doesn't bother about uh, statistics in the sense that says okay this percentage of my decisions should be in this way every year i must make 50% for example decisions like this and 50% like that or more or less no for him it's not a matter of uh, statistics he assesses and evaluates every case independently you cannot just do things as a robot or you know as a kind of autopilot you have to study everything one by one maybe maybe most of decisions would be similar maybe uh, at least at some time maybe this happens maybe most of them similar this way or that way but he has assessed every case independently but those who are not wise they have a cliche and they just print it the big difference even if they decide to do the same thing it's not the same process that they went through it's similar somehow like you know when we have in the quran bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim we believe that every bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim was revealed separately it was not copy pasted in a sense Allah is not repeating Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim every Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim has its own reason and it's revealed separately so you can say it's like everything is unique like human beings another example Allah created billions of human beings today for example but each of us is unique he doesn't repeat in a sense that you know he says okay now we know what we want we press the uh, button and we will have billions of them no so this is very important so in order to be able to serve social justice rest you need to be very active and very determined in control of your decisions in control of your emotions take your time but don't waste time if doesn't need more time 
This means you have to be qawwam bil qist. Shuhada'a lillah. In this process, maybe there are people on this side or the other side. Suppose at least there are two sides because at least justice means between two things we have to find what is just. Sometimes between three, between maybe one part, two parties, three parties, maybe. For any choice, at least we need two options. Neither your love towards one party nor their, your hatred towards the other party should make you compromise about justice. For example, Allah says in Surah An'am, verse 152, فَعَدِلُوا وَإِنْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَ When you speak, even your speech, you have to be just. وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَ Even if the person that you are talking to or talking about, either way, is your relative, one of your kinship, so relation like friendship, kinship, etc. Belonging to the same madhab, to the same religion, having the same, I don't know, political tendencies, etc. Should not make us act according to favoritism and compromise about justice. On the other hand, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَعَانَ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُونَ This beautiful ayah in Surah Ma'idah, verse 8, that we many times quote, that do not let your hostility with some people make you unjust. اِعْدَلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ الْتَقْوَىٰ So neither friendship nor hostility should make us compromise about justice. And then he says, you know, we have this famous saying, which is wise. Not always, not necessarily, but many times, loving something makes you blind and unable to hear. You cannot uh, see the truth when you love someone, something. Sometimes your aql is hidden if the, because I for example my child if my child makes a mistake it's very difficult for me if I am not trained myself not to take the side of my child when he fights in the school with another child how does hope act by ifrat and tafrid, either uh, makes you demand more for one party or make you give less to the other party. <laughs> sometimes you love someone, you give him more. Sometimes you don't love someone, you want to give him less. Both have problems. Therefore, Quran says, with respect to your kinship, uh, still you have to say the truth. With respect to enemies, again, you have to observe justice. Then Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli refers to the ayah that we just mentioned for another reason, Surah Hadid, verse 25. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِيَسْدِ One of the aims of all messengers, yeah, because it doesn't say لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا few of them, some of messengers is Jam e Muzaf. It's indicate, although it's not a Nas, but it's Zahir in Omum, in generality. We send mal messengers, finally, so that people, so they help people, they teach people, they support people, but people should stand up for best social justice. So one of the aims of all the messengers has been to help humanity achieve rest. He says, of course, this is not the ultimate end. 
for us uh, we have higher uh, levels uh, for us the main thing is human uh, development into the maximum capacity that they have every person that becomes a true servant of Allah or becomes a complete human being insan a kamil or a true servant of Allah someone who meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is muqarrab who is mukhlas these are higher levels than just having social justice in the society but this is very helpful if in the society we have justice it helps a lot that people can then focus on their spirituality, if they can have equal opportunities to serve each other, etc. So this is not the ultimate end, but certainly one of the middle aims and ends of all the messengers is to establish rest. And then he says, this Justice, as we said before, is a quality not only for human beings, for everything. There is a way to be just or unjust. Uh, maybe you have noticed uh, this point in Ayah. In Surah Kahf, verse 33, Allah refers to two gardens. He says, Keltal Jannatain Autat Ukulaha. وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا Both gardens, they used to bear their fruits in abundance to the extent that Allah says وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا None of them did zulm in bearing fruits. Some people have tried to say this is metaphoric, etc. But he says, no, this is not metaphoric. If an apple tree bears fruits as expected, not too little, not too much that, for example, you know, causes uh, the tree to be broken, etc. But abundant fruits as much as it's right for it this shajara is adil is just Allah says walam tadlim minhu shaya means none of them did zulm with respect to okol to their fruit for example so it's very uh, beautiful point that he observes that Everything can be just or unjust. Of course, for them, means those things don't have understanding, those have choice, don't have responsibility. They act according to their uh, way of creation and they are adil. They are not uh, disobeying Allah in that because it's everything by taqween. But it's uh, intelligent and free agents like human beings and gents who have to be careful. Then he talks about Adalat Mehwari Islam. Justice is a very fundamental principle in Islam. Islam is somehow built around justice and of course unity as we will talk about it. He says when it comes to every individual Muslim, remember this model because we need this model in future also many times. Every individual Muslim has to establish justice inside himself or herself. In some lectures about justice, I have explained that in Islam, even if you live alone, you can be just or unjust. If you live in a cave, you can be just or unjust. Not only with respect to animals, water, etc., even with respect to yourself. Man Allah Whoever violates boundaries of Allah has done zulm to himself or herself. If I have talents and I waste them, if I waste my time, etc., this is zulm to myself. 
Okay, so first we have to establish justice inside. Suppose I have five talents, but if I just, without any wise reason, focus only on one and waste others. If there's a wise reason that I have assessed them, I said, okay, based on the need, based on, I don't know, resources now, I work more on this one. That's okay. But making the decision without wisdom and wasting your talents, maybe the one that you didn't actually develop was more important, was more needed. This is not justice. So first establish justice inside every individual. Then every Muslim with other Muslims, they should establish uh, relations based on justice and unity. Then Muslims and other followers of other prophets, for example, other monotheistic religions, again, they should act according to justice and unity. Then believers in God, Muslims, Christians, Jews, for example, all Abrahamic faith, monotheists, and non-monotheists who are ready for uh, relations based on justice. We establish relations with them based on justice and unity. Even here, he brings unity. So everything is based on justice, ad rest on the one hand and unity on the other hand. Now he brings some examples. These examples are very helpful. And I mentioned the first one today and inshallah we continue next week Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the early days when Islam was very unknown, had weak position, not many followers, lots of troubles were created against Islam and Muslims. And towards the end of his life, when he had power, Islam was very established, there was no challenge in whole Arab Peninsula for Muslims. There were some internal issues with Munafiq, but in the sense that no one was able to challenge survival or existence of Islam. In all these 23 years, he was consistently calling for justice. For example, he used to say, Ayyuhan nas, inna rabbakum wahid, wa inna abakum wahid. Oh, mankind, nas, mankind, not only Muslims. Your father, your Lord is the same. Your Lord is one. Your father is also one. Adam. La fadla la Arabian ala ajami, wala la ajamian ala Arabi, wala la ahmar ala aswad, wala la aswad ala ahmar, illa bit taqwa. No one has any privilege over the others. For example, he mentions Arabs over non Arabs or non Arabs over Arabs. Red over black, black over red. No one has any privilege. Allah but taqwa. And taqwa is something that you can achieve. You cannot choose your own race, ethnicity, color, etc. But you can decide to be muttaqi. We should give privilege to people based on what they can make efforts. This is good. This encourages them. Or in the Quran says, Inna akramakum inda Allah atqaqum. Surah uh, Hujurat, verse 13. So he kept telling this, even as I said in the uh, end, two or towards the end when he conquered Mecca, the same thing, the same message. He says in the same way that that Quran, we say, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Don't they ponder on the Quran? <coughs> Had Quran been from someone other than God, they would have found lots of conflicts inside Quran. A book which is revealed over 23 years, Mecca, Medina, time of peace, war, lots of issues is consistent. Rasulullah was also consistent with respect to his principles. 
he was always calling for this social justice so this is the first example that he mentions that how he always called for uh, equity and for social justice and it was not that uh, for example in the beginning he was emphasizing more and then compromising or in the beginning he was compromising later he emphasized more he was always consistent about this issue inshallah we'll mention other examples bismillah next week alhamdulillah rabbil alameen اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجه